Welcome back, my friends. It's Tactical. Back with the sidearm. It's going to be my new CCW. So I thought I'd do a quick review of this. It comes in this hard case, which is very nice. I hate it when guns come in freaking cardboard. That's like the worst thing ever. You spend all this money and it comes in freaking cardboard. So at least they gave you a real case. So that's always cool. Some of the contents within the case. Got one of these little padlock things that'll go in the junk drawer little barrel plug slap that in junk drawer uh, comes with two magazines with a little loader that's always nice now this mag has the extended uh, bottom for bigger hands and then there's the flush one which I like that one better and I can't find a way to take that off so I'm in one of the not so free states so there you go 10 rounders bummer i know <laughs> comes with three interchangeable back straps for different sizes here's the large and the medium the medium came on it and the small is on there now so this is my first wathers totally cool now this is the ppq m2 now the m2 came out i think in 2013 I'm not sure when the, the original came out, but technical specs on this. 7.2 inches overall length. The height is 5.3 inch. The width is 1.3. The barrel length is 4.1 inch. Uh, the weight is 1.6 pounds or around 25 ounces. The retail, I'm not sure what the retail is. I probably overpaid for it, but I don't even care. <laughs> With tax and stuff, this thing was about $680. The trigger pull is about 5.6 pounds. It's got that funky little safety like the Glocks have. I was never a fan of those things, but hey, I'm going to give it a shot. What the hell? This is my first striker fire. I've never owned one. I've shot them before. I've shot a couple Glocks. So we'll see how this goes. Now, when I first got this, like I said, it came with the medium back strap on. And man, it fit friggin' perfect. I was like, wow. I mean, out of all my pistols, a lot of my other ones fit really good, like my SIG P226. But this is a lot smaller and even more ergonomic. And then I put the small on it, and I was like, holy crap. This thing just fits so damn well. So I'm really interested to see how this will go. There's your three-dot sight. Uh, the rear is adjustable for windage, which I thought was pretty darn cool. With a lot of pistols, you don't even get to adjust it. I, now, I guess the front sight is interchangeable, so I might try that. What I really want to do is I want to get some tritium for this. So I'll end up doing that and see how that goes. A lot of stuff is uh, ambidextrous on this. Here's your slide release. It also has one right here, which I've never had a gun that did that before. That's pretty wacky. Cool. Uh, the clip release, which makes it the M2, because it used to have paddle style, like an H&K, which I like those paddle styles. Just because you can do it either, you know, either this side or that side. So it's got this. I guess you can flip this around over here, and I might try that. But we'll see how that goes. Now, there's no decocker on this like I'm used to. This is my first pistol without a freaking hammer. Like I said, striker fire. So that's, that's a little different. I like this front uh, trigger guard. I love the squared off kind. I know it's not always recommended, but I was taught old school, and that's how I was taught to fire a gun. And I do the weaver grip, and that's how I do it. But yeah, accessory rail, like the texturing here. I don't know what you call that, serrations, I'm not even sure. Just so you get a grip, and if you got slippery hands, and you can grab the front. Some people cock it like that, I don't, I just go like this. But hey, that's cool, very nicely done. Made in Germany. 
Man, this thing is so slim. I love how it tapers like that. It fits really well in my holster too. I'll have to do a review of that. There you go, there's the stamping on it. This is the 40 cal. I was gonna get the nine, but man, I already have three nine millimeters, so I have four, right? I do have another 40, but hey, I'd rather have two 40s and freaking four nine millimeters, so hey, what the hell. <laughs> Now, if you want to change the interchangeable back straps, I'm not going to do it right now because I ain't got a push pin or nothing like that. Well, you do. You see that little pin right there? And it also doubles as a lanyard if you like that style. All you do is push that through, pin comes out, and this pops up and out. And reversal to put it back in. So it's very simple to change it up and make it how you want. Close up of the stippling. It's, it's really good. It's not overly aggressive, it's just enough. And the polymer up here is just so smooth and, and well done. They did a really good job. I'm, I'm actually very happy I finally got a Wathers. I always wanted the P99, and then I seen this thing, and everybody's raving about it, so I had to try one. And I wanted a new CCW, so this is it. Now I guess the trigger is unlike most pistols. I guess it's just super, smooth flawless short ultra short reset on it something i thought was pretty cool it comes with a target from the factory there's the guy's signature in germany now, this is a five shot group at 15 meters pretty impressive look at that three just touching right in the middle and then two flies i'm not sure what ammo he used but there you go now i'd have to say out of all my pistols and any pistol i've ever owned this is probably the easiest to take down. I was very surprised at how easy this is. Um, probably my second easiest is my SIG P226 Elite 40 SW. That thing's a freaking breeze. Because I got some other polymer pistols that aren't as easy. You got funky little thing you got to push through and you got to hold it. It's, it's a pain in the butt. My SIG uh, Pro SP2340 is like that. My HK USB Tactical 45 ACP is like that. So this thing. I was very surprised at how easy it is. Oh, you better do a safety check. I don't do safety check. Oh, fine. Here you go. Freaking cry asses. <laughs> so, to, in order to break this down, very simple. Move the magazine. Now, this one, you got to depress the trigger to make it happen. And all you got to do, this thing is so damn simple. See these little slides right here? It's on each side. If you pull that down on each side, that's freaking it. That's it. That's all you do. And this thing breaks in half. It's ridiculous. I can't believe how easy this is. It's awesome. Now this, the frame itself, weighs nothing. Oh my God. This thing is so darn light. I couldn't believe how light this was. Now here's your, uh, your rails, which are kind of beefier than a lot of my poly polymer pistols. I was kind of surprised about that. Very nicely done though, you can see the inside. Now I guess this striker fire, this is 100% cocked, I guess. That's what I heard. I'm not very good at striker fires. I don't know a lot about them, but I'm just telling you what I learned. So, cause I, I guess a lot of the Glocks are like 50% pre-cocked. This is 100% pre-cocked. So there you go. It's ultra light, oh my God. All the weight is right here in the slide. That's it. And to take the rest apart, Here's your spring with the guide rod. Now the blue goes back, just so you remember. The barrel just falls right out. Boom, that's it. That's all there is to it. Look how well done this is. I mean, totally, you don't see no friggin' machining marks, nothing. This is beautifully done, very well done. And to put it back together, it's just reverse of what you just did. Uh, let me get it so I can see, hold on. I want to pre-scratch my barrel. Should just fall in there. Yeah, just like that. Take your guide rod and spring. Now it's a plastic guide rod. I like metal better, but whatever. And I don't know if this comes apart. I don't think so. <laughs> so like I said, the blue goes back here and there's a little notch. Now I guess they said it might flex a little bit, but that's normal when you're putting it in. And just line it up with the rails. Man, this thing is so damn easy to put together. Just like that, boom. I mean, you don't even gotta rack it all the way. Just like that, and that instantly locks in. Do a function check. 
Put the mag in. Make sure it lo locks open. Boom. That is it. So for the ammo I'm going to be using today, nothing special. Actually, really cheap stuff. Federal range target practice ammo. 165 grain full metal jacket. So let's see how this works in it. We'll load this thing up. It is a steel magazine, which is always nice to see. Now, I guess one way to tell the M2 from the original is it has the orange follower. I think I'm getting bit by a deer fly, damn it. Hold on. Rah. Okay, sorry about that. Now, usually, I, I'm a little different. I always do minus one per ten. That's just me. That's how I was taught. Unless it's really hitting the fan. Then I'll load it to the max. So if you got a 10 round clip, you put nine in it. If you got a 30 round clip, minus three. So every 10, I minus one. That way I just don't whoop the spring prematurely. I know it can take it, but that's just how I do it. Should have used the friggin' loader. I didn't even, I'm not used to them little loader things. I'm gonna have to practice with that. So the first test, uh, I'm gonna try to be accurate, so this might be slow, but I'm gonna do it pretty close. I'm only 15 yards. But we'll see how this does. I haven't even adjusted the sights, nothing. So who knows how this is going to go. Let's do it. Okay, let's see how that three-shot group did. Because I can't see it. Maybe you guys can. Oh, I, actually, I can see it on the camera. Hmm. I wonder if I flinched or not. That's standing, so I'm trying to do the best I can staying. But you see one on the left and right of the bullseye, then one high. Hmm. Yeah, I've never been a fan of uh, factory ammo anyways. It's never that accurate. That's why I hand load. Just to get a little bit more accuracy. But let's try it. Take our time. Two of them were good height, they were just left and right, and then one was too high. Okay, let's just take our time. We'll do three more. Okay, let's take a look on the footage. Can I see from here? Hey, I hit the frickin' dot. Oh, right. Huh. Yeah, they're all... Yeah, not bad. So that one high one, I must have flinched or something. But not bad from standing from 15 yards. Okay, just to prove I am shooting this far. You see what I got right there? We'll zoom it out. Just I am. 15 yards. I, I got three bullets left. Let's do it. Okay, like I said, I got to take my time because I'm trying to be accurate here. Shit, I think I flinched. Damn it. Getting used to the trigger. The trigger is so freaking awesome. One more. Okay. Shit, do I got another one? What the hell? I, I must have counted wrong. Fuck it. We'll just do the last one. Excuse my French. Okay, now we're empty. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Let's zoom this in. I think I flinched that first one. Let's take a look. Eh, well, screw it. Let's go up close. Sorry about the wiggling, guys. Let me back the camera up so you don't get sick as I'm walking. Let me take out my earplugs, too, because I'm probably yelling at you guys right now. But let's take a close look and see what's up. Oh, yeah. No, not bad. Not bad with factory crappy ammo. Now, after I watched the footage, I did shoot 10 shots. And if you look closer... This one, there's two. Let me get it close. There's actually two bullets went here. You can tell one went a little higher than the other. Right here, this one. If you fold the paper, you can tell. See how it's not a circle? It's more of an oval. So I put two bullets right there. One went a little higher than the other. So there was the ten shots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So actually pretty darn good. Almost two in the same damn hole. And that's with crappy factory ammo, so that's not saying a whole lot. So I'm going to hand load this thing and see what it really can do. Now I just got it on my shooting stand. This is just to show you what I was talking about. This way we can flatten the paper and you can see, see how the nice perfect circle. 
Boom, 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 boom. That's the one that had two holes in it. One was here, and then one was right above it, and then there, and then there. So all 10 did hit. Not too bad for crappy factory ammo, but it definitely could be better. So my overall thoughts on the Wather PPQ M2 for the S&W. Pretty sweet, man. This trigger is really nice. With these striker fires, I never liked their the trigger. I never did. It was just too mushy, too grindy. I don't know. This feels really good. And I thought being the 40 would be a little on the snappy side, but it really isn't. You saw me shoot it. It really didn't jump that much. Just have a good grip on it. and It's a little snappy, but not really, man. I really like it. The fit and finish is really well done. It shoots good. The trigger's good. The ergonomics are freaking awesome. Man, I love this thing. This thing, I'm so glad I picked this for my CCW. It's almost like I picked something cooler than I thought I was actually getting. So there you go. There's my little review of the Wather PPQ M2. Definitely recommend this thing. This definitely is a home run. Thanks as always for stopping by. And until the next time we meet.